everybody. Thanks for joining me. It's Teresa with Wreath Addiction RN. Um, I live in Benelda, Illinois, and I have a wreath making business and I make other different things. So anyway, a lot of people have been asking me about the witch hat, um, how I do things. Um, a lot of people do that, but I thought I'd go ahead and make a tutorial on that and just show you from start to finish what I do. There's going to be a couple steps I'm just going to be telling you about, but I thought I'd start it from the beginning. So today I'm going to make a Santa hat, so I do that just a little bit differently. But we start off with our witch hat. It's from Dollar Tree. And um, I'm going to take off the boo and the buckle. And as I get working on it, I will uh, zoom in. Let me just do that now. Let's zoom in a little bit. So here's the hat. I'm going to cut the tag off. It'll come off as I take these things off. So I take the black off, especially when I'm doing a um, Santa hat. Or if I'm going to do, which I'm going to also make um, a, some other fall, possibly a um, scarecrow type fall hat, you know, just something uh, with some more fall colors, some burgundy and some fall colors in there. It's not going to really have a scarecrow face on it or anything, but it's just going to be like a scarecrow hat. So anyway, so you just take all this black stuff off. You can save it. I saved some, I've got a ton of it, so a lot of times I throw it away. I have seen people use this inside their ribbons, especially for a Halloween um, piece. So that would be good. I'm gonna move my device so I can see it a little bit better. to go all the way down and take off the purple as well. Of course I don't want purple on my Santa hat or scarecrow, whichever I decide to use this for. Probably going to just use my scissors here to cut this because I can't figure out where the end is and I don't want to take a lot of time figuring it out because this is not enough to mess with. So This has another piece down here I'm sure. Um, I also take off the rim. I just take all of it off. For a Santa hat, I take all of it off. Anything but a witch hat, I usually take it all off. And if the witch colors are going to show through, then I'm going to take it off then as well. So it just depends on what you're going to do with it. Um, now for a um, scarecrow, I do have some brown spray paint. I may spray paint this brown. Um, I, but I'll probably check it out. I'll probably roll my mesh over it first to see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to do a candy corn uh, looking one, so I will probably spray paint this white for that. Um, and I'll take a couple of coats, especially with something, because the mesh that I have for that is thinner. And uh, so I want to make sure that it doesn't show through. So I just set this stuff aside. And here's what I have. So the other thing I do for everything um, is I will go through and I will cut these knobs off and they'll fly everywhere so if you have an area that you're working in that's your living area as well that you are not going to be uh, you know they're going to be walking in and things like that you may want to do this in a more uh, area that you're not going to worry about where these things are flying or over a trash can. 
I have a craft space in my basement that pretty much is just me. So, so basically that's what, that's what you do. Okay. And, um, I do that all the way around. Okay. So like I said, this one's probably going to be for something else. I'm going to show you some of the different ones that I made once we complete the new Santa hat. So that's how I prepare. So this one, I have spray painted it red because I didn't want the black to th show through. I probably would not have had to worry about that. Um, but, um, I just wanted to make sure. So I have this roll left over. I normally use six inch mesh and I get it almost all of it from uh, Hobby Lobby. Today I did find some at Walmart, which inspired me to make this one today. So, um, let's see if I can find my small. So I use these small zip ties. And I'm gonna I'll go ahead and get out my piece that I'm going to want to use for um, the hanger part. And I usually take a pipe cleaner and I cut it in half. And I can you can use the metallic ones or the fluffy ones. I just happen to have this fluffy one here. And I usually hook that at this area. This is where I usually put my uh, hangers for, um, you know, in order to be a hang hung on a door. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. And um, actually, I like, to, I like to have that so it's a little bit more secure. So hang on one second. Um, and I don't want it to slide up the top part in it either. So I'll just take it like this. I'm going to twist it one time and go underneath here. So it definitely gives it more of a um, secure location because you don't need a lot for the hanger for this. And then I'm just going to twist it like so. Now, just be careful. Remember that it's here because when you start twisting, you want to make sure that you have this out. All right, so I have my, my zip tie. I'm going to take my mesh and I'm going to scrunch it together, scrunch it together, pull it together, whatever term you want to use. And I'm gonna squeeze it as tight as possible. And then I start this, this direction because I wanna go this direction with it. Some people start at the bottom. I've always started at the top. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. This is just how I do it. If you wanna do it a different way, it's not a big deal. The concept's the same. Just however you get it on, everybody does it differently. So it's not a big deal. I just take this and I squeeze it as tight as possible. I also have mini, oh, I guess pliers, I guess is what they're called. I don't know, I'm not good with terminology on tools. I just know what I want it to do. And my husband and gets it for me, so. That's how we have our little system worked out. I'm like, this is what I need it to do. You tell me what it's called and we need to go buy it. <laughs> so that's our deal. All right, so um, some of these little things didn't fall off. So I'm just gonna go through and make sure that they're off. Now you have to be really careful when you're cutting these off because this is just plastic. So um, you cut them, you could you know, cut your frame. You don't wanna do that. So I just kind of bunch it together. No right or wrong. Doesn't matter if the edge is showing, it's totally up to you, however you want it to look. I try and get my edges in for the most part, um, especially if it's got a, an ugly edge to it. Some of them don't have, you know, a bunch of little balls on the edge of them. So I'm just take this around and you just keep turning. And of course you wanna make sure the front is the nicest, looks the nicest. And you just keep turning. I'm gonna pull this down for just a minute. Now, I like mine tight. I was at, uh, walked through a little flea mart craft show yesterday and I saw someone have their stuff on there very loosely. Again, no right or wrong. Personal preference is all it is, however you like it. I personally don't like that it that loose because I'm afraid that it will 
you know, slide down. It won't hold its shape. Those are my thoughts. Again, you may have a different technique or a thought in order to keep that stuff in place if that's the look that you want. So again, creativity, everybody has their own creativity. So I'm just gonna look at this. I can hear my dog barking out there, guys, I'm sorry. My husband's outside mowing grass today. Today is Sunday and I have a craft show at the end of the month, so don't mean to, I'm sorry, I'm just not used to not really elaborating a lot, so anyway. All right, so again, can you see how I did that so the hook will stand out, okay? Just need to be able to get it on there. Make sure that this little piece is down because that can poke you as well. And you could put a little um, hot glue on it if you choose. Helps it to uh, have a little buffer. Let's go around and see what the front looks like here. This is 10 inch mesh. I said leftover, probably got this from, from Craft Outlet. That's where I got a lot of my just plain colored 10 inch mesh. Um, and then the six inch mesh is from Walmart, the Dollar Tree, uh, Dollar Tree Witch Hat frame. I used pliers and uh, snips, a zip tie and a pipe cleaner. We're going to use another zip tie at the end. This one's getting to the end. Can you see how much curlier it is and harder to keep it from rolling up on itself? I may try and push it down here. Sorry guys, just so I can maybe get a little bit more control over it. As it gets more to the end of the roll, it's uh, way curlier and more tight. So I don't want it to spread out too far and then be thin. That's my, I don't want it to be thin. I don't want it to be, it's gonna be somewhat seen through because this is mesh. Mesh is not solid, so, you know, but There's difference between being seen through and being, you know, totally uh, thin, I think. Again, no right or wrongs. Everybody has their own way. This is just the way I have adapted to do it. I've watched many, many, many YouTube videos myself. Lots of people do them. Lots of people do them multiple ways. No right or wrong, you'll probably develop your own technique after you do so many of them as well. And now we're down to the bottom, but it's a good way to get use out of some of this mesh that, you know, if I only have one roll of this, I can't really use it for a, a project because it's just not enough. take this around one of the brackets down here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me cut this off real quick. I just want to make sure I have plenty. So I'm going to cut it a little long. I still want to hold my tautness. And I can always move this to a different bracket as well.
Okay. Now the top part is done. Okay. So in order to save some time, I did cut some of this. I'm going to get out some um, pipe cleaners, probably. Yeah, I'm going to get about eight. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to cut them in half. I like to line them up as best I can, flip them, bend them, and just cut. This saves you on some of your materials. Try and be as cost effective where you can. There's no need to have this great big pipe cleaner on this six inch mesh. So, alright. So, these are cut at 30 inch lengths. Like I said, I got this at Walmart today. Um, I don't buy a lot of Walmart stuff, but once in a while, for the holidays they have some really cute things and I thought this would be a really cute Santa hat so I take it and I fold it so this is cut at 30 inches I overlap it probably I would say it's probably about an inch and a little over an inch that's overlapped it doesn't matter however you want to do it okay and then I fold it down and I hold it and I just take my one hand, and you can put something on there if you like to help you. Next time we'll do that on the next one. And then I just scrunch it together. Now, where I overlapped it, I want that on the back. So I take my pipe cleaner. I kind of wish it together. Is that a word? I'm not sure. And then I fold it up. And then I take it and I start on the ends. And on this one, I just twist it around. So on this one, I also wrapped it around, I did the middle bar here, this middle bar. But on the end one, because it has a tendency of flopping, I did wrap it around the outside bar as well, just to keep it from flopping. It has really nothing else to hold on to. So let's do this next one. This is a little thinner. I may have to supplement with some, because I only got um, two rolls of this, I do believe. I think that's all they had. So let's put something on this to hold it in case you're new at this and you can't do the ruffle method without doing that. So basically what you're doing is you're folding it and then you're doing a ruffle method. By folding it over, it's giving you double the coverage. Again, we want the folded side to the back. And I'm going to try and make this as even as possible in the center so that I have enough ruffle on each side. So I just look at it. I move my pipe cleaner around a little bit. And then I'm going to put it next to this one. So, so far we're going to have two in this outside one. I'm going to cut this down really quick with my scissors. I'm going to cut this so it doesn't get in my way. There we go. Nice and neat. See? Okay. 
now we're going to continue to do the same thing. And if this is something, you know, as you've been going on, you can always fast forward to the end. That's the best thing about a tutorial is that once you get it, the hang of it, I like to start on the other end as well, just so that we're meeting in the middle, nice and neatly. Again, I'm going on the center loop, and then I'm going to take one of my things and I'm going back around. Sorry guys, it's not wanting to cooperate. There we go. My fingers are also not wanting to cooperate today. Why are you being so tiny? And then you're just gonna twist it and you don't need a lot back there because that's all you're doing with that. Okay, it's gonna be super cute. I'm just praying I have enough material. If not, I do have some other, I have, um, I don't have the dark green, but I do have white. It would probably look good in there. We could supplement with some white. Again, no rules, whatever you want to do. And we could probably do like every two, we could put a white one if we needed to. So when you hold it up with this hand, then the folded side is already in the back. So when I just try and stick it through my fingers there. So when you just keep doing this until you're done. like to use the six inch mesh on the ruffle on the rim I think it is just the perfect size so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from side to side and put one in
So let's get a couple of these made up. Let's just make up some of these real fast here. And then we'll put them on. So there's so many other things that you can do with these witch hats. So you can make gnomes out of them. You can do, like I said, the scarecrow hat, the witch hat. Is, there's so many different variations that you can do with the witch hat. I mean, oh my God, scary, funny, whimsical. Um, so many things. Um, tons of them are on my um, page. And this is a good smaller price point, if, especially if you're going to be going to a craft fair, so that you, um, you know, doesn't really take that long to make it. Um, and then, and your cost in it really isn't all that much. inch mesh can be found at Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, uh, does not carry it, sorry, um, Joann's. Uh, again, it just depends on, you know, what you're looking for. I like Hobby Lobby's the best, but they don't have a lot of, um, these colors sell out really fast. They don't have a lot of the holiday colors in stock, but they have a lot of the um, everyday colors, you know. So I use those a lot. I use the purples and the lime green, and uh, they don't have like regular hunter green. So kind of a bummer. Because you can make a really cute green and white one. All right, so let's see here what we got.
usually takes about 18 of these to do the rim. I have 14 cut up so far, so I need to cut up some more as well. I really think it's going to work out fine. I'm super excited about that. Super, super cute. you do just have to move your mesh over a little bit but just remember that if you're smashing it too much then maybe you don't you know you don't need to so just um, just look at your project and see you know because you don't want it so smashed that it just doesn't even look good that you really can't see the mesh because it's so smashed in there Maybe we won't need 18, maybe it'll only need 14. I always cut a little less because I think every time every mesh is different and uh, I would rather cut less than um, cut too much and then I have this wasted product that maybe I could have used it for another project and needed it at different measurements so try not to over prepare but prepare enough to get you going and then if you don't need it then you're not out a bunch of product just sitting there cut for a certain you know certain um as they call it recipe so like if you cut a bunch of 10 inch mesh at you know 25 inch lengths and then maybe you really want it at 30 because you want to do the woodland ruffle instead you know just the smaller ruffle so you know just a lot of things just to there's you know you want to be prepared you want to have your supplies ready but it doesn't hurt to have to cut a couple of things even if you're on a live it doesn't hurt to have to cut a couple of things because if you, like I said, it could be the difference between you having to go and buy another roll of product and not. I do not put ribbon in the uh, mesh on the bottom. Some people do. Um, I just find that you can't really see it. If you want to get good coverage, you do have to, you know, pack them in there somewhat tight, and your ribbon's just wasted because you just can't really get a good seam. It's better to make a bigger bow and put it somewhere, or use it as a um, a sash across the center here, or something like that. That's where your ribbon would be best placed, I think. Again, no right or wrong. Some people may be able to make it look better. I just don't, it's a personal preference, so. So in this particular one, this took 14. 30 inch ruffles. These are cut at 30 inches. 14 30 inch ruffles. And I'm sorry if I forgot to tell you that. 30 inches. It's pretty tight, but I want to go ahead and get this one in here to make that center look good. I think. 
kind of spread out just a little bit more so you can see it. And then, let's see. It's got some of the darker green in it. I'm not sure exactly what ribbons I'm going to use yet, but I am going to make um, a bow. For the top and I think I might have some that's a little bit more um, has a little bit more of the traditional green in it so I'm gonna look for that so that's eight and a little over eight inches and a little bit over five This was bought from, this ribbon was bought from Michael's last year. This is from last year's stock. Sorry about that. Some unknown color. So you take your ribbon and you, this really doesn't matter. This, sides are the same but I'm so used to turning and twisting so in order to do this you'll see this on the other one that we'll be doing you take it in here and you twist so that the uh, blank side or the not pretty side I don't know what you want to call it but underneath that's the word I'm looking for the underneath is now showing up there's the start of the ribbon and I don't have the other stuff over here because I really haven't had a chance to look through all my ribbon over there so I'm going to go ahead and end the video please if you have any questions ask them um, again reef addiction RN you can send me a Facebook message um, I will look and get notified from YouTube if you have any comments or questions and um, I hope this was um, informational for you I said the bow is going to go right here and once I get that in there, I'll take a picture of it and post it as well. So thanks, everybody. Um, and again, like and follow my page and subscribe to my YouTube page. I greatly appreciate it. Wreath Addiction RN. My name's Teresa, and it's been a pleasure showing you how to make this hat. Thanks. Bye.